Hi there and welcome to Kilted Crafts. I'm David, I'm be a leather worker for today. Um, what we're going to do today is we're doing a kit from Tandy. Um, this is the travel notebook, um, number 4188-01. It retails for, in Britain, £12.26 on their new pricing structure. I'll never get used to this camera, there we go. Um, and the US, it's about $14.99 US dollars. It's basically, it's a leather notebook, um, leather band notebook with an elastic band going around the middle and also the same strip holding in uh, the actual leather, uh, the actual notepad itself. Right, what you get in the kit is the nice bag with the nice cloth front. Um, you get your little notepad. Sorry, the sun's out and right on my desk at the moment. I'm still trying to set up a new studio. There's the information should you need it. Um, the notepad itself is three and a half inch by five and seven sixteenths by one eighth. Um, the actual notepad notebook holder. Um, is six by four they say it is um, and for us in Europe that's 89 millimeters by 138 millimeters by three millimeters well, there or thereabouts right, you also get your instructions which that's English Spanish and on the inside Good old Francaise. You can do um, just a standard one, standard cover, and um, the one they advertise it with is, come on, there you go, has the word travel on it, and a, and a line, and a little aeroplane, and initials, um, which can be personalised, which is nice. Other than that, there is a I believe it's an American Western um, style. I don't think it's an acanthus leaf, but it's certainly a leaf of some sort. Um, and that's basically that's what we're going to be carving on this one, because it's a little bit interesting. Um, and it'll be a bit more engaging for you guys than quite simply using just a set of letters and a, an aeroplane, which I don't have the aeroplane anyway. So, uh, oh, and also of course, you get your leather, which is pre-cut to the desired shape, and it's pre-punched with the holes that you need to thread the spine in. And uh, yeah, there you go, right. So let's get started. Right. This stage is going to be um, putting the, the lines for the carving for the pattern, that one, um, onto the actual leather. Um, by the way, the, the constant droning you can hear in the background will be uh, my rather large fan that I have on the go at the moment. Um, and so you can see the fluttering here, because <laughs> it is crazy hot at the moment in England. Um, we're in the middle of a our third early heat wave of this year and uh, yeah so please apologize for that I'll try and minimize it as much as I can right <coughs> so what I'm going to be using is I've got my squirty water bottle um, for car uh, soaking the leather um, and a lot of people will use a stylus like this, this sort of thing. Come on, there you go. Like that sort of thing there, with a smaller end there um, for doing these. But if you want to get, um, and they are good, but if you want to get a, a more a finer point on your line, a finer line, um, what I've done is I have raided uh, my wife's my wife does a lot of baking and I've raided her um, 
icing um, box with all of our icing tools. Um, I think the Americans call it frosting, um, but these are for used with like royal icing and that sort of thing. Um, and that gives a really nice fine point to it, and we can get quite a nice bit. Um, oh no. Oops. Help if it was the right way around. Right, so first of all you case your leather. Um, that softens all the fibres ready to accept the uh, carving. Um, it's important to get that as even as you can because um, otherwise it will possibly dry blotch you with watermarks and that sort of thing. Um, then you just wait a little while um, for it to... You, you need it to sink down so you need the top to be um, a little drier than this is now. Obviously that's um, very wet. Um, so you just let the let that sink down a little bit and then come back to it and that's when you do your and you do the carving, so I'll see you in a second. Right, so I've done, I've just lined this up on here, ready to go. Um, and you should be able to uh, carve in quite nicely now. And just go gently around the image, keeping a finger on it to make sure it doesn't move while you, after you've started carving those. This will be fun with a fan. So, sort of keep your fingers on it if you want to check it, then have a look at your pattern, lift up, do several little checks to make sure that everything's where it's supposed to be, and then when you're happy with it, take your pattern off. Is all ready for carving. I don't know if you can see very well. I'll just. Sorry, I haven't quite got a good lens yet. Uh, come on, focus with me. There you go. And you can see it's a bit, it's just exactly like tracing, as if you're using carbon paper or tracing paper. 
works exactly the same. Now obviously you can do anything you want um, on this piece. Um, I just have chosen to do this because it's included and it saves me having to design a, a new um, pattern. Um, we will be doing ones obviously where you can customise it if you want to, send your orders in and we'll be more than happy to cater for that if there's something special you want on it. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, all ready for carving and uh, so let's get going with that. Right, so we're ready for the carving. What you use to carve leather with is a, oop, there we go, swivel knife. No, and again, sorry, bear with me while I get used to my new setup. Come on, focus. There you go. It's a swivel knife. Um, and you put that bit, you put your index finger in that bit. Grip the other bits with that and then carve. And effectively, it's a bit like using a really, really short pencil. And focus back. See, that's how you hold it. And you can keep that bit. With, keep your pressure on with that bit and then turn it with that to get your lines. Right, before you do any of, before you actually do any of that you get a, you need a strop one I look knocked together and been using for a while. Some jewellers rouge. Put some of that on there. Make sure that you're getting the edge of the blade. And then just bring that down slowly and carefully. Because bearing in mind you are sharpening a knife that's designed to cut through flesh. Um, and as Chuck Dorset of Weaver Leather says, I'm leather too. This is obviously all leather. So we've got to be careful using something that's designed to cut leather. So Do the other side as well. And then you should have a properly nice sharp blade edge. So then with your leather still cased, um, if it need, if it go, if it dries out, if you're carving for a while and it dries out, and just spritz it again. Leave it for a minute or two and then come back to it. How to know if your leather's too dry to cut. Um, you'll start to get little snags and little sort of like lines around the edge of the cut. It should just be one nice clean cut. Um, but as I say, that can um, change, you know, that changes as you're drying it out. Right. Um, with me. Because on this one the, the straight lines are quite important, they sort of feed it through um, the graphic and then as you when you fold the book together um, these lines should all line up and you want them to look good and look nice. So if you want to get them extra straight um, feel free to cut using a ruler. As I said always, cut gently and carefully. Um, always being safe. Make sure your ruler's clean so it doesn't mark the leather. And then get that where you want it to cut. And then, as it's only thin leather, user, you don't want to cut too much. Just cut that to where you want it to. And that one. And that one. And I'm going to finish it off. Next one. 
don't worry if you leave it a little bit short um, you can always join it up properly um, by hand better than cutting too far because exactly the same as with wood you can always measure twice but you can only cut once once your leather's cut, it's cut. There is absolutely no way to undo that cut. So just take your time. Also, if you've got to make a cut in leather, so it's work when you're cutting something out. Um, you can first go round it with a swivel knife, um, and it'll give you a much nicer, finer cut. As you can see here, I want deer thing. Yep, the leather itself has actually been cut. If you go too hard with one of these, um, sorry, really should have done that earlier. There we go. If you go too, if you go too hard with one of these, then you will cut into the leather, uh, well cut through the leather. Right, those can be widened out a little bit later on, um, just to make a bit more of a mark and then you just start cutting through and um, swiveling with the swivel knife. Oh, yeah, that's as far as that's going to zoom in so um, I'll try and keep it in frame, apologise, apologies if it goes out.
believe it or not, I am down the other end of the garden to where we live, and that laugh was my wife in the kitchen. She is a very happy person with an incredibly loud laugh. I find for the most part just find a part of your drawing that you want to start at and just work your way through and slowly. Be as smooth as you can. And then just follow your lines through. Hello. Hello. 
It's not like I've got a microphone on or anything. And I could hear you having a phone conversation down there or something. Oh, okay. Fine. <laughs> so, you know, you walking up and going, yeah. <laughs> I have to search for this in the video and mute it. Thanks very much. Sorry. You just have to zig it. <laughs> what? You just have to go, just move over. Uh-huh. Sorry about that. Wife's just come up with my medicine because apparently she prefers me better alive. <laughs> it's very kind. Take that once I'm done in. Always remember when you're designing leather carving patterns. The actual carving itself needs to be quite simple. You can always add more detail later on. But if you get really detailed pattern, it's really small. Like for example, I've carved a triple headed dragon with scales and ridges and all the beautiful things down its spine. Now, it looked great, it, looked, it was a beautiful piece of artwork but the thing is if it was on sort of like an A5 or whatever half of legal paper is book cover it would look spectacular but this one wasn't. This one was on a tiny little coaster about three and a half inches across or sort of 75 80 mil and honestly by the end of it I mean my hands started to cramp up now because um, of me wonderful fibromyalgia and everything but doing that one um, I did do it in one sitting and I have never felt pain like it all the tiny little details and going like this and then tiny little corners and scales and just yeah <laughs> so <laughs> keep your initial carving um, as simple as you can is the moral of that story right there we go that's carved in Yep, all ready for stamping and that's when we start putting the detail on and really fleshing out the um, fleshing out the piece itself 
and uh, so yeah so signing off for now um, I'll see you on the next episode where we'll start doing some more carving um, and who knows maybe even get a little bit of colour down which I think would be nice maybe pick this out pick the leaf out in a forest green and then do the rest brown at the back do you reckon think that would be nice I think it would let me know in the comments if anyone watches this in time <laughs> um, yeah so there we go thank you for staying this long through the video um, very grateful um, I could not possibly do this without you um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys um, and for you for you especially you, you there that one right there give it a minute no it's not gonna do it fine but you there, you there anyway yes you um, so yeah I'll uh, catch you next time and until then take care of yourselves especially in this troubling time don't do anything crazy and uh, stay safe bye bye